So is this live? Oh no, are we live? I think we're live. Hey guys, another episode of Keeping It Real. We're having fun over here. Um, anyhow, we got a great show lined up today. Look at Mike's already laughing. We're, we are live, oh, Mike. You bet, you bet. <laughs> anyway, so we have a great show lined up. We got a great guest, uh, Mike Gunzelman from Kansas City. And the episode show today is how to add 10 million of production to your business. For, for those of you that don't know who I am, the guy that I like, can't hold still, jumping, I'm, I'm standing, by the way, more energy, like I need it. Um, my name is uh, Jeff Manson. I'm a Hawaii real estate broker and also founder of Real Geeks. And my co-host is Frank Klesitz, and he's the CEO of Viral Marketing. Say hello, Frank. Hi. That's all you got, Frank? Hi, <laughs> I'm Frank. Anyway, I'm, to, I don't know, I'm, I'm in a weird to, mood today. I'm all pumped up. I am anyway. here to ask the questions you guys want to be. Okay, read. awesome. Frank is awesome. He's <laughs> usually got more energy. Stand up, Frank. <laughs> anyway, Stretch never mind me. And I have not been drinking tonight, so I'm drinking except for water. Actually, it's today here in Hawaii. Anyway, we're going to get going here. I just want to uh, give a few housekeeping items. If this is the first time um, you've tuned in to Keeping It Real, you're probably thinking, what the hell am I listening to? But we do give good educational content on how to help agents do more business in the real estate business. It's a mastermind. Bring on top agents, agents that are growing, and share what they're doing. And uh, hopefully we're giving the best educational um, growth information online. If you want to get notified and it's the first time you're uh, viewing, you can go to keepingitreal.com, keepingitreal.com, and opt in with your name and email. You can also follow the Real Geeks Facebook page, the Real Geeks Google Plus page, or subscribe to the Real Geeks YouTube channel, and you will definitely get notified. If you've got an email notifying you about this, don't go opt in, but you can go to the Real Geeks Facebook page, share it, like it, and let all your uh, realtor friends know about it. And um, we've been listening to you guys. We've had a lot of people ask, hey, Jeff, hey, Frank, I'm really busy. I don't really have time to watch these videos. Can you guys put them on podcast? So this week, we actually took all the past episodes and downloaded them as podcasts, and they're now available on iTunes. And I think you can go to um, iTunes under podcasts and search Real Geeks. Um, go in there. If you've been watching these shows, give us some reviews, some ratings. Um, it'll boost up our uh, our ratings, and uh, more people will be able to find out about it. And uh, did I miss anything, Frank? No, other than just tell the the, the story of Mike and why we brought yeah, him on right, together. Yeah, great. Yeah, and the the reason why I have Mike on is he's a younger agent. He's been in the business since 2011, and last year he sold he got up to six million in volume, and this year he's on track to sell 16 million in volume. He's already I mean he's smoking on track of that. And he's on track to sell right about 85 homes this year. And you know what I really like about agents like Mike? He's trying to be a top mega agent, but he's in the hunt. And I remember back, I've been in the business for like 23, 25 years, and I remember back when I was in the hunt. And I would mastermind. I'd go to seminars. I'd go to webinars. And I would do all that. And if it wasn't for like uh, top agents sharing, and stuff like that, I would have never been where I want. And Mike's, I think, has been taking about, uh, advantage of that. And you know what, Mike? I got one bit of advice. Enjoy the hunt and just keep going. You run into a roadblock, just, you know, take that challenge on and, you know, don't listen to anyone say you can't, it can't be done because it can be done. I know when someone told me or whenever someone would tell me, hey, this can't be done, I'm kind of mm -hmm. competitive, so I want to show them that I could get it done yeah. and I can kick their ass. But that anyway, friend. welcome aboard, Mike. Hey, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, especially thank you, Jeff. Uh, this, this is incredible. I've been watching your guys' videos for quite some time now and uh, learned a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm just excited to be on the other side of it. Uh, hopefully someone can learn something from me uh, and hope save them a couple thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah. Totally. totally. So let's start, it, let's start off by how you kind of... <clears throat> started in real estate and the first things that you did right off the bat and then oh my pretty goodness. much well yeah so I want to hear that <laughs> and then pretty much for the entire hangout today we're going to go through the journey of what you started right away and then kind of all the little mindset shifts and limiting beliefs and how you ended up hiring your assistant and getting rid of the buyers you mentioned and trusting everyone in your team all those things you built through I want to hear that story and then we'll get into like the very specific skills that you execute yeah. to 
get the result, right? So tell us what you did when you first started getting in. And also we want to cover, and we're also going to cover all the, the sources of business he's doing yes. and the systems he's got in place. So like go it. ahead, Mike. You bet. Uh, I started in business in 2011. Uh, I used to uh, run a commercial insurance territory um, and was working my butt off uh, 80 hours or 60, 70 hours uh, a week. Uh, I was getting text messages from my district manager like 2, 3 in the morning uh, asking what I was doing. Uh, and I just thought that wasn't the life for me. Uh, so my brother-in-law uh, kept trying to get me involved in real estate and uh, I came up for 4th of July in 2011 and uh, he's like, man, we should really get in business together. Uh, he had been uh, just a full-time agent for like eight years uh, and he'd just always been a great guy to me. Uh, and so I looked at him and I was like, I think I'm pretty happy uh, in insurance. I was making about 100000 a year. Uh, I thought that's that was my limit. That was my ceiling. Um, and then all of a sudden I got back home and he started sending me properties. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Uh, and he's like, I really think you're going to be moving back to Kansas City here soon. Um, so that took about three weeks and then I uh, put a contract on a property um, and then got into real estate. Uh, so that's where it all started. Uh, we started at Remax and I didn't get my first sale until six months in business. Uh, wow. And what I was doing was just calling all my friends, uh, telling them I'm, I'm in real estate. Uh, how can I help anybody? Uh, so I was wasting my time a lot. Uh, I didn't know how to prospect for business. I didn't know how to lead generate. Uh, I thought people would just call me. Uh, and that was kind of towards the end of the crash. Uh, people were starting to come back and buy. And, well, at least from what we thought over at Remax, we didn't know people were just making tons of money out there. Um, so what happened was, is uh, it, right at the six-month marker, uh, I sat my brother-in-law down and told him, I was like, I don't know if this is it for me, man. Um, I just, I don't see how people make money in it. And he he told me the, the best thing I ever heard in real estate so far, and that's, well, if you don't think you're going to make it, I'll, I'll take your database over and uh, just pay you a commission here and there. Uh, and I was like, wow. <laughs> it's it's tough world. Uh, so uh, uh, I went home, thought about it, and I was like, you know, screw this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, and, and after taking bold, I realized that was the moment, that moment where some realtors go through, uh, and, and that's where you either make it or, or you don't. Uh, well, talk so we, about that. What's, what's bold for no one that knows? That was a pretty big, pivotal moment for you. Tell us about that experience. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, I didn't didn't take bold till uh, about a year and a half ago after we moved over to Keller Williams from Remax, uh, and bold is just uh, building a life by design uh, instead of just living the chaotic roller coaster of real estate. Uh, so we we're uh, I was able to take that and mentally expand my mind that I can set a business plan to build my real estate empire uh, and and bring people on to it, and that was the best thing I ever learned, uh, building a life by design. Uh, so it was very, very uh, uh, awesome to do. Um, so after after we came over to Keller Williams, uh, my wife was pregnant, uh, and she was she was uh, doing real estate with me. Uh, you know, it's like every other husband and wife couple. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. Uh, we were doing about $6 million in real estate in, uh, uh, what was it, 2013? Two things we did about both six million, uh, no real increases. Uh, so last year was pretty much my first year in real estate, and uh, my wife and I were taking on all the Keller Williams principles and uh, just learning how to be KW culture. Uh, so we were going to all the masterminds, trying to meet with every new agent I could, flying to Amelia Island for real estate masterminds, or heading to family reunion, or heading to mega camp. And I was just seeing all these people out there that were doing 60 to 65 million in real estate. And I'm like, that can be us. Why not us? Uh, so I was like, let's do it. Uh, and my wife's like, we're having a kid. <laughs> uh, how do you plan on doing this? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, so I started meeting the right people. Uh, and, you know, it, that was an emotional growth right there with having the kid because uh, we go to the doctor and the doctor's like, you're going to have miscarry here in two weeks. So I was like, awesome. 
Uh, we wound up having a healthy baby boy December 30th, uh, 2014, uh, and that changed my life and that leveraged our business. Um, I had taken Recruit Select to bring on an assistant to help us grow, and she had the perfect disc behavior uh, to be a buyer's agent. And she had been an assistant for 10 years. And I told her, I was like, what what didn't you like in your past job? And she was like, well, they always, you know, hung me by the carrot, uh, strung the carrot in front of me and said, we'll get your license. Are you there? You there? Did we lose him? You uh -huh. there? You there? We're good? Hey, Mike. We're good? Yeah. Yeah, we can... S yeah, okay, yeah, you're back. All right. So I was, I was saying it was... Uh, um, my assistant, I said, if she comes work for me, that she's going to get her license within the first month. And she was like, all right, I'm in. And we got her license. Uh, and then December 30th, uh, after working about six months for me, uh, that was the day she went full time. Uh, and since that time, we've been closing over a million uh, uh, in real estate ever since. So it's that was the moment, December 30th, when I had our kid, uh, that we decided to become a real estate team. And where did you find, where'd you find, where'd you find your assistant again? Um, so we, uh, Brian Eisenhower, who's our team leader uh, here at Keller Williams, uh, told me to find at least 50 people and interview 50 people. 50 uh, people? Yes. Uh, it was the first time doing it. Uh, so he wanted to just have me meet, meet a book. Uh, so we started doing it, and um, I actually came across her uh, from another assistant uh, she was doing her hair, and she was like, she'd be the perfect hire for you. Uh, and I interviewed her, and we took her through the recruit select process, and uh, Brian signed off on her. Uh, and it's been, been a great uh, addition to the team. So, so let me ask you, Mike. So is she, is, you brought her in as assistant. Is she, is she now working as your buyer's agent? Or she just Correct. came on as assistant to, to take off the duties of, of your wife? She was an assistant for six months, uh, okay. and then we had our kid, and now she is strictly full-time buyer's agent. And, and you, and you, but you do have an, an additional assistant now as well, too, right? Yes, yes. So uh, in February, we went on the hiring process again, uh, and this, <laughs> this interview, is, uh, I went through about 15 interviews, and I was having Cassie do all the interviews for me. Um, and I saw Courtney, who's our team manager now, and she, in the middle of the third interview, uh, she broke out in a rash on her chest, uh, just because it was so she was so uh, awkward with the being around people that she didn't know. Uh, and I was like, "That's the one. Uh, she just hates to be around people." Uh, and I was like, "That's who I need. I need. I need someone assistant. to take care. Yeah, to to be our assistant." So she she is the team manager. She runs everything. I call her my boss. Uh, so that's the main thing with it. I think the big aha here is the number of people you spoke to to find your ideal team. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I thank Brian for it every chance I can get uh, because it it taught me how to sit there and ask the questions uh, with getting the right people uh, that work with me. Let's let's go a little deeper on this. Like, where did you get these questions and? Where'd you get the um, training to actually do these in a structured way? Well, Keller Williams has a class that's uh, it's called uh, RSTLM, uh, the Recruit Select uh, class, and it's a two-day class that teaches you how to ask the questions and and look for the right hire uh, through disc profiles or AVAs um, to actually hire the right person that fits that model. So it's the last hire that you have. Uh, so that's the the best thing about it. Great. Mm -hmm. So you got your assistant in place. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. what was – you got all that work off your plate. What were you able to do now that you weren't before with an assistant? So, so in, uh, that was around February of this year. Um, we started uh, – I just bit the bullet and said, let's start doing this lead generation thing everyone's talking about. Uh, let's start calling on uh, for sale by owners and expireds. Uh, and start setting a weekly goal on how many listing appointments I'm going to go on. Uh, and that's what catapulted us uh, to, to go above and beyond what I'm used to uh, and expand um, right there. So, 
So, so let me ask you, Mike. Um, you're working both expireds and FISBOs. I'd like to dive in a little bit deeper on both those. Yes. Because there's a lot of people they say, they hear like, "Hey, work expireds, work FISBOs." But you know, I think everybody hears that, and they're great sources. Trust me. I used to work the expireds. I mean, I love them. Um, do, are you following any one person script? Uh, how did you learn how to communicate with them? And then I'd like to dive in deeper, like exactly what is your process for working them? Like, I mean, from pulling them all the way to follow up till you get an appointment. I would like you to, to like dive in deep because I think it's really valuable yeah. for people to hear this. Um, so <clears throat> what happened was is um, we were every Friday there's a mastermind class and. We were using Tom Ferry scripts mm -hmm. or uh, um, Keller Williams scripts or Brian Eisenhower has a real estate site uh, mm -hmm. where he has scripts on there. Um, and that's where we started using them all. I started role playing in the morning and uh, I bought a system, Vulcan 7. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where we get our uh, expired and FISBO scripts. And I just sent it's, it's also a dialer too, right? Just so correct. It's, it's, know not, not, not only is it an auto dialer, but it also has a calendar that you can sit there and, and set up all your follow up appointments. Uh, because that's where people don't realize that you got to dial into is the follow ups. Uh, so we were, able, made, man. we were we were we were able to develop a follow up system <laughs> that uh, my uh, inside sales agent and I follow, and that right there is taking us to the next level. Uh, right. So that's that's the fun part. So so you 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 use Volcom Seven to get the expireds Correct. and to call them and then to schedule follow ups. Can you can are you doing anything else besides calling and following up? I want to go back to calling and following up and the actual <laughs> procedures and cadence you're doing on that. Yeah. Are you mailing anything? Are you emailing them? I mean, are you we, knocking we, on their door and dropping off a pack? I mean, what are you doing? Not yet. No, it's uh, we haven't had to. Uh, we're hitting our numbers so far with it. Uh, just because it's to where the point I'm at in our real estate business, it's we're still growing. Uh, we mm -hmm. haven't plateaued at all. Um, sure. So I'm still trying to add more pieces, more pu pieces of the puzzle uh, to mm -hmm. make this complete. Uh, so we're still adding talent. Uh, I'm still mm -hmm. trying to find talent. But as far as cadence go, um, yeah, yeah. As far as your follow, -up, because you know yeah. and I know, because I used to work the expires. You're not going to always get them, and they're pissed off, and you can defuse no. them if you're really good. But you gotta follow up with them, yes. and most people will call once or twice. They give up, and they say, "Oh, these expires don't work." It's no, they no, they just suck at follow up. Period. Yeah. Um, so, so, so what do you do? What's your process? Uh, our process is is uh, every day we start with the new fresh list of expires that we get in. Uh, if we get a hold of them, we'll set them up for a follow up. Uh, either coming from contribution, if we 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 need to find their motivation. Uh, so that's the reason for our first phone call is find the motivation. Uh, why they took it off, or why their realtor just jacked up on the process of getting <laughs> sold, um, and then we always try to go for the close of the appointment. Sure. Um, so every every call ends with, "What time are you available to meet? Thursday at five or Friday at six, uh, or just two times?" Uh, so that's every call, um, and then uh, uh, from the first expireds, after we finish that one, we go into our follow up expireds. Uh, so our two weeks down, uh, three weeks, four weeks uh, to two months expired, uh, we follow up with them. Uh, we typically on a follow-up system have about 10 to 15 of those phone calls uh, that are warm nurtures that we know that are going to be selling within the year. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, we lead into FISBOs for sale by owners. Uh, we, find, we call the new ones, try to set the appointment. And then we go on step two, step three, step four, steps five uh, of uh, for sale by owners that are warm, cold, haven't listed yet. Uh, and then we try to set an appointment on each one of those. Uh, from there, we do circle prospecting uh, that we just started here about three weeks ago with circle prospecting, and that has been amazing. Uh, I was telling Frank earlier before we started that he's already set. I think it's it's already three listings that he's gotten from Circle Prospecting. Uh, well, well hang on, hang on, hang on Mike, you mentioned you have someone making those calls for you, so you hired hey, your I, assistant, Yeah. I'm sorry, yes. you hired your assistant, you started doing uh -huh. the calls yourself, and then yes. we're, on to the, we're on to the next thing is that after the expires and the FISBOs, you actually then hired mm -hmm. someone to help you make outbound calls. Yes, so a, a friend mm -hmm. of mine from high school uh, that was doing uh, 
he was selling uh, uh, oxygen to, to the elderly from like the Price is Right commercials. Uh, I would sit there and crack jokes with him about it, but I'd always try to recruit him and just always kept in touch with him to see what he was doing. Uh, and he was going through a rough patch in his life, and I was like, Austin, it, it's time. Uh, come work with me, uh, and let's see if we can do this. Uh, and I hired him on as an inside sales agent. Uh, so I taught him the ropes. We role play at 8.30 every morning. Uh, and then we lead in and compete with each other to see who can get the most appointments. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so you guys are both doing that and following up. And then for those of uh, the people may not even know, I mean, we have all levels of agents watching and tuning in. Mm -hmm. um, the circle prospecting, um, you're basically basically circling around uh, your own listings or where you have a buyer or. or Explain what the circle prospecting is in case they don't know. It's it's outbound calls, but can you yep. can you dive in a little bit deeper and for those yes. who may not know? Uh, so for circle <clears throat> prospecting for us, we use a service called Cold Realty to obtain phone numbers and the addresses <laughs> around uh, either a house we just got under contract, a <laughs> listing of ours that we just got under contract, mm -hmm. um, or one of the one of our listings that just sold. Um, we haven't dove into the buyer side yet just because we haven't had to but it's working uh, so we're probably going to go more towards it um, but so once we once we get uh, the information from Cole Realty we load it into our auto dialer uh, and simply just use a script to, to get a listing appointment uh, and that's simply Awesome. So, so can mm -hmm. you give us an example script? Because everyone wants to know the scripts and stuff. So, can you yeah. give an example script of like maybe a just listed or one just sold? Uh, yeah. I, so one, so one we've been using. I'll lately. even do a little role play with you. Oh, let's go, Jeff. Let's Bring go. It on, hey, let's role play. <laughs> no. So right. typically, typically, the scripts go like, uh, "Hello, <clears throat> this is Mike Gunzelman with the Gunzelman Real Estate Group. Uh, I'm, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? That's fantastic." I'm I'm doing good. Uh, I wanted to give you a call because we uh, had listed your neighbor's property at 123 Main Street. Um, and for the purpose of this phone call is, is we were able to get it under contract within 30 days uh, at the list price of $315,000. Uh, wow. So I wanted to ask you, uh, have you thought about moving lately uh, or happen to know of a, a neighbor or friend wanting to move into the neighborhood? Uh, not really, not right now, um, but I'll definitely give. That's a good price, Mike. Yeah, it's uh, it is a good price, and the thing is, is uh, all it took was uh, for your neighbor to trust us with getting their home sold. Um, mm -hmm. How long have you lived in your house? Oh, we've lived here about five years. Five years, uh, and with that that five years, have you done uh, very much maintenance with the house or in, any improvements? No, no. I, yeah, actually, we actually added granite countertops and stuff like that. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, do you happen to know how much your home's worth nowadays? Because it may oh. be wor worth more than you think. Oh, really? Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not sure. Why is that some interest? Uh, something you would provide? That is actually a service I provide. I'm actually available from Thursday at six o'clock or Friday at five. Uh, would you be able to uh, meet me and go over uh, just what's what the price is uh, or what the worth is of your house? All right, sure. Perfect. Okay. I'll see you then. All right. All right. Cool. So and then what? Do you, let, let me ask you a question. So that's pro, uh, circle prospecting. Um, what about going like? Oh, do you have any scripts or any certain scripts with the expires that you're actually because? You know, the number one goal is to get an appointment, right? When you're talking right. to an expire, because they, they're, I mean, the expires have their home on the market. They're most likely going to relist it. The majority mm -hmm. of them do. They want to give us all, us salespeople, the reflex, no, I'm taking off the market and stuff. Do you yeah. have a certain close or certain thing that's really helping you, um, you know, get that appointment or, or flush out their motivation? Because you said we're trying to find out their motivation. Gosh, you guys are going to think I'm boring, but I just follow the model. Uh, when it comes to following the scripts uh, wow. and, and getting the close, I stay on stay on top yeah. of it. Um, so I'm very, I, I sit there and build a relationship sure. with the person. Um, but then I always go back to the script of why were you selling in the first place? Sure. So I, sure. I always dive into the motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I try to use a little bit of pleasure and pain with it. Of course. Uh, and then after that, it's it's game on uh, yeah. and, and getting the appointment. Right. Where'd you get the scripts, Mike? Uh, just from our office, uh, an agent that had just started, uh, she was a newer agent, uh, had got him from another, 
uh, and said, hey, Mike, uh, you'd be good at this. Save this email. I'm emailing you over some scripts. Um, and those were those were some awesome, uh, uh, I believe it was Mike Ferry scripts. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mike Ferry. And then, and then we were able to uh, take Bold twice so far, and we have the scripts from Bold. Uh, awesome. So we used both of those. Yeah, here, let me just share one after you build, uh, that I used to use all the time. It was quite effective. Uh-huh. It, it, you know, after you build some rapport and you're gone, you'd be like, hey, Mike, if I could get your home sold in the next 30 to 60 days, would that cause a problem for you? No. <laughs> no, exactly. That's what you want, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's exactly why we should get together. Can Are you available today at 4.30 or, or right. is, is 6 o'clock better? How about we meet at your house so we could uh, look outside the, those windows there? <laughs> anyway, so write that one down. I got that one from uh, Matthew Ferry, by the way, from his productivity school. All right, so we can move on. I, we're, not, we're not doing a script and role play. I just wanted yeah. to give these guys some idea of, like, hey, you're actually calling, following a script, communicating, building rapport, and actually closing for the appointment. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, correct? Yeah, that is the ultimate goal. Get the appointment and uh, get into their house and meet at the dinner table. It's, mm -hmm. I used to sell life insurance and disability insurance, so uh, being at the dinner table is crucial. Uh, how can you swing, uh, swing for the fence if you're not up at the plate? So, Mike, we talked about how you got your assistant. That was a big aha. Yeah. Now you're able to focus, you know, I'm assuming they were doing the listing and the transaction work because they were licensed, right? Yep. I was okay, doing so it then, all. Yep, so they took care of all that, and then what you did is you went and crushed prospecting so mm -hmm. much to where you got help and you hired someone to help you make calls. Correct. Um, anything you want to add a little more into, like, finding someone to help you make calls? Because that seems to be, like, the holy grail for somebody to make expired and circle prospecting calls and actually set legitimate appointments. Yeah, it's uh, the biggest all. After I'm, after I had Austin join the team, is he's holding me accountable. Um, not only do I have other people counting on me to get more business to the team, but now I've got a guy competing with me to get more listing appointments. Um, so that's the fun, fun part and responsibility part of the business uh, is that I'm I'm on that side still. So uh, we've been sitting there going after more people to hire, so all this week I've been uh, going through interviews with people because we're going to be growing again on the inside uh, sales agent side of it. Okay. So so it's, it sounds like <clears throat> bringing on this ISA is actually holding you to a higher level too, along with the accountability. So your standards have actually gotten risen. Correct. You, know, you had to rise your standards because you couldn't slough off or you couldn't flake or you couldn't get involved in office crap anymore because mm -hmm. now you got this guy that you're competing against and he's actually like you got to set a good example, right? Yeah, uh, not not necessarily competing against, but uh, well, we no, like to call it with, competing with. Like, you guys are pushing with, right? Yeah, you got a little competition. You you, you said it earlier. You're, you're seeing who can. <laughs> I mean, it's all one team, but you're seeing who can actually set more appointments, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, and come it's, on, let's be honest, Mike. You want to beat his ass every day, right? Every day. I, All right, and he wants to be your. <laughs> he better be watching this because uh, <laughs> right now we're both tied at six appointments for the week. Uh, so, so Mike, we've got a, I have to say, what the way you've been building your business is incredible because you haven't dropped a dime on anything expensive yet outside of hiring two key people, which no. is where your money should go. I mean, we're not dropping money on marketing, mm -hmm. any of that stuff yet. No, so let's, not, let's go, not yet. Not that's, yet. So let's keep going step. with the story. So you have your, you started yours with yourself, and then you got your assistant, then you got your prospector. Do an outbound seller, mm -hmm. so you have all this leveraged listing business, probably bringing yeah. in buyers from the sign calls. Yep. Now what? Uh -huh. What's after your ISA? Uh, well, well, well the, uh, my assistant, my first assistant hire turned full-time buyer's agent, uh, and that's when we brought on another assistant. Uh, so for the most part, I still have got my original hires, um, and that's been the best part so far is we haven't had to worry about that. Um, but everyone's bought into the team. Uh, everyone is prepared for next year's growth. Uh, we sat there and have gone after next year's plans. Um, so we're just prepared to go for another growth phase uh, and, and jump the, jump the uh, hurdle again. Uh, that's the fun part about all this. So how did you get rid of your buyers, though? So go uh, back to 
Okay. You know, you're yeah. To your buyers. Yeah. Then you basically said, "I'm not working with buyers. I'm only doing listings. I'm only focusing on the le- focusing on the leverage." Uh huh. Where Where did your buyer leads initially come from, and how did that work out with bringing a buyer's agent on? Yeah. Initially, my buyers were coming from referral, Facebook, and sign calls, uh, and some open houses. Um, when I was over Remax, that's all I was doing was calling my center of influence. Uh, checking to see if they knew of anybody looking to buy or sell in, in real estate. Uh, hanging out with a lot of friends. Um, goodness, I was only doing six million, so I had a lot of time on my hands. But I thought I was busy as could be. Um, so a lot of it was just people were calling me saying they want to buy this house or look at houses. Uh, so that's what I started doing. I just said, hey, we just added on a buyer's agent to the team. Uh, would you uh, mind working with somebody that's better at it than I am? Uh, because she's doing this full time. She's only looking at homes and can sit there and write the contract better than I can. I'm terrible at it. Uh, so how about we get uh, get you in touch with them? And so, said yes. They love more than, uh, than they love me, and everyone's happy, happy. 50-50 split on the buy side? Correct. Okay, great. So you have a buyer, so you hire the assistant, you got a buyer's agent, your assistant became your buyer's agent, or you have an assistant ISA buyer's agent. Mm-hmm. What's next? What was the next step? Well, the next step... Looking Man, to you're a little, and you're breaking up just a little bit on us. You see him breaking up, Jeff? Yeah, I do. That's yeah. all right. We're going to hang in there. He'll come back. Ooh, baby. Uh, <laughs> come so back then, with us, Mike. <laughs> I'm coming. Uh, <laughs> so the <laughs> next step is uh, we're going through interviews uh, to bring on a, uh, another inside sales agent and also a listing agent while we're also looking for a marketing assistant to help with our uh, team manager, Courtney. So we're all right now looking for talent. <clears throat> that's, that's the next step. Uh, we've uh, went to a mega and uh, met some amazing individuals and, and spent some money down on a, a couple platforms that we're going to get into the internet market. Uh, so that's that's what we're looking for is a pay-per-click uh, websites now. I, I just think the aha here, I have to say, is how there was no work put into, like, marketing, and it was 100% on developing and building your people and yeah. focusing on listings all the way up to this point, and you're just finally starting to spend a couple hundred bucks a month on lead generation outside of your, <laughs> your dialer. Yeah, you're yeah, like, a... The complete opposite of the way around for most people. Right, Jeff, would you agree with that? I, I would agree 100%. And this is, and, and even though, you know, and I've been in the business for 23 years, and I started the way Mike did. There was no, really no internet when I started and all that. But it's a really good way, and I went after listings. It's a mm-hmm. great way to build a foundation because everything, it's rock solid. And depending on the market shifts, you can still always get listings. And it's the best way and the best foundation to continue to build. To, to, to build this rock, you know, to build a house on a rock. So uh, you don't need the technology at first. You, uh, and everyone knows I'm the founder of Real Geeks, but you need, you, that's just another avenue, okay? You need to do, you need to diversify. You and I think Mike is doing it right. Yeah. Be, because oh, he's yeah. going after the listings, building the team, and he's building a sound real estate business without spending money. I think we just lost Mike. Hopefully he'll come back. Not here. But, Oh, okay, I will, I can just okay. Just can, wasn't can, moving, Frank. <laughs> All right. You're, anyway, you're, so a, you're think, a big black screen. But that's okay. I, I, still hear you. Anyway, I think it's the best way to go, and then you start bringing in, and then you bring in. Oh, okay. Well, we need an IDX website to bring in, generate some some property search traffic, a home valuation traffic, and oh, by the way, man. folks, property search traffic, the maj- uh, a good percentage of people looking on an internet site have a property to sell. They're not all first-time buyers. The problem is the agents are treating them like buyers, so mm-hmm. therefore they treat them like buyers. They don't find out, just like a sign call, they don't find out if they own their current property and then go on and ask them, you know, are they planning on keeping their current property uh, as an investment or, or do they need to sell that? They're taking the wrong approach. They're treating these people like buyers when a good percentage of them are sellers, okay? Uh, but anyway, um, I think you're going about doing it right, and then you keep, and then you diversify. Okay, we've got this down, and we're growing, and we got our ISA. Now let's bring on a, a a website to to generate some leads, and now let's bring on this other thing. But you do it in steps, but you build it off the foundation of your business. 
Yes. I think uh, you're, we're, I think we're, we're definitely, track, Mike, and you're going to kill it. We are definitely playing red light, green light mm. uh, with with our with our uh, uh, pay logs, uh, with our mm. profit and loss statements. That's what's driving this right. Mike, explain what that means. Our profit and loss statements? No, a red light, green light. Oh, goodness. Uh, just as long as the business keeps coming in and we keep working hard, uh, that right there is showing us green light that we can keep growing. Uh, and, that's, and that's where we're going with it. If you're not sitting there working, you're spending too much time bellying up to the bar or uh, sitting there servicing your dang business, uh, that's red light. Uh, you can't sit there and grow. You can't add on more people. Uh, if you're just sitting servicing it, uh, you're there you and grow it, uh, and that's the fun part about it. So I, I think the biggest fun part here. Uh, yeah, the, but big, the I, biggest haha ha by far. Oh, we had, Sorry, I had a little lag there. <clears throat> interrupt you. <clears throat> is that team leader for your very first hire told you to interview 50 people, and that yeah. changed your business when you were taught that because now you saw how important the talent was, <clears throat> and you had that foundation. Let's let's keep moving on to the next steps. We were just getting into the technology part. Uh -huh. Starting to spend a little money on marketing and where you're heading now. Yeah, um, let's talk about that. Uh, we bought Real Geeks. Uh, the team is bought into it. Uh, we're ready for it. Uh, we just got the website built uh, through uh, 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 Jeff's people. Um, he got us in touch with a good website developer, uh, and she finished it. And we're looking to explode off it. Uh, we developed the strategies uh, and. Be rolling out next week. It's, we're we're talking about how we added ten million to our business. <clears throat> our team is so young. Uh, we, can, we can get up there quickly. Uh, just you have to sit there and believe it, uh, and that's where we're going with it. Our business is not complicated. It's very simple, uh, and hopefully we can keep it very simple. <laughs> Because uh, we both know I'm not the smartest individual here. <laughs> no, no, you you just keyed on something that's very important, and I want to cut in here. Is he said it's simple, and we want to keep it simple. The problem is most agents want to complicate it, and they think they need all this convoluted, special, crazy marketing. You just want to keep things simple, streamlined, and then if it's profitable, then you keep doing it, and then you add another one. Wouldn't you agree, Frank? Uh, Simplicity. Yeah. Well, I'm the guy that runs in the internet marketing space. I, I get the questions that that are completely irrelevant to just just call. And this just backs you up. Believe me, um, when you start getting into the Facebook and AdWords advertising, you can spend all day long yeah. AB split testing and looking at analytics board and not getting a single deal if you don't catch yourself. Mm -hmm. well, well, yeah. Well, you he, you you got to hire somebody to do that for you so you can then stay focused and you're not. He, he's treating that. It sounds like he's going to treat it the same way he is with um, his business. He's not going to like get in there and get this website and then be in there doing PPC ads nope. himself and looking at analytics and stuff. That's working his, in the business instead of on growing it. Right. It's the same thing yeah. as servicing it. With a strong mm -hmm. talent foundation and mm -hmm. a, an emphasis on listings, Mike. Why don't you tell us a little bit when you work bold? I, I think there might be something we're overlooking That's a bit as your database. <clears throat> we talked about working your expireds and FISBOs, and now how you're going to start doing some buyer lead generation with Jeff. Um, what about all the people that you, did you really know many people in Kansas City? You see you came back there, or is that That's, new? I didn't catch that. No, so uh, I, I grew up here in Kansas City, a wrestler uh, and football player. Uh, how my business started getting going was uh, just by referrals. Once my friends believed me that I to stay in this business, uh, they started coming to me, um, but a lot of them were, you know, 26, 27 years old. So not too many of the friends had jobs that could buy houses. Uh, so I was going to my friends' parents uh, and getting them to buy homes. Uh, so that's how it started. I just started building a referral based, uh, and the referral based business kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And uh, I'd love to sit here and say that. We're running, you know, heavily off expired and FISBOs, but I'm looking at our tracking sheet. We run a 60% referral based business. It's high for FISBOs, uh, and then I didn't know if I'm Yeah, you're breaking up on us right now. Hey, Mike, you're breaking out. Are you on wireless or plugged in? Uh, I'm on wireless. 
No. Oh, oh, okay, that's the problem. Frank, what's up? Your guy should have told him to plug in. Anyway, I, did. I just spanked Frank. Anyway, I know. Um, <laughs> hey, Mike, can you repeat the, like the last two minutes about your different percentages? Because I heard yeah. what you were starting to say, but nobody heard you. Trust me. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> you bet. So I started a referral-based business, and I would love to sit here and say that <clears throat> We're heavily expired and for sale by owner based business now, but the past year we're still heavily referral. Uh, I'm looking at our tracking sheet, and 60% of our closed business is referrals. Uh, 30% is expired. Uh, 5% is for sale by owners, and 5% is sign calls. Uh, so if I'm looking at what's working and what to expand on, I need to dive more into my database um, and, and just expand the database more. Yeah, that's, I would, I would, I would, I would agree. On, and I think when I met with Mike and his team, um, I think it was the last day they were leaving out of the mega camp because I was there in Austin. And one of the things we talked about is I, I basically told him, "Can you hear us, Mike?" I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, so one of the things we went over. <clears throat> is one of the ways he can work his databases, they should be calling everybody in their database saying, hey Mike, this is Jeff with American Dream Realty, giving you a call today. Um, I've got a lot of friends and past clients asking me to keep them updated on their real estate investment. <clears throat> and my website can do that. Would you like me to set it up? It'll send you sold data as it happens in your neighborhood and also it'll send you a monthly market report. Is that something you're interested in, Mike? Oh, if they do goodness. that, then that's one way to leverage the Real Geeks website or a website similar if, if they don't have Real Geeks, that they can leverage that and that is golden because now you're actually dripping on them with something of value and they gave you permission, okay? And another thing I would do is I would, you know, talk to Frank and his team. I'm not trying to push you that way or plug Frank, but a lot of our existing customers have had success doing those videos, market reports, and, and, and different types of um, videos, sending them twice a month, and then landing them back to the Real Geeks website on the blog post where now they can go watch this video from this email and hear the message, but now they got the home valuation widget yeah. and the property search widget, and they're on your website. Now they can start engaging. Um, and then um, one of the other clients, Bart Vickery, they sent out this one email it was, uh, that Frank put together for them and that was to his database. Is it what mm -hmm. I don't know how big his database is going to be, but basically saying how what a great time it was uh, to move and markets have gone up, blah blah blah. And they drove him to the home valuation, the Real Geeks home valuation tool, and he got 72 leads and oh, took oh listing just from his freaking database. <laughs> so I'm not. This is not to be a plug. You can use Frank, whatever system hear, you on. want. You know, it can be uh, whatever other kind of platform you're using, but that's. Those are a couple ways that you can leverage your database, and it's not going to cost you a lot of money, right? No. Well, let me just say something on that. So the, um, the educational videos, you can go to our site, and we publish the top ones. Yeah. We send out, we send out millions of videos. I'll tell you the top five for the week, every week on the blog. Yeah. And then that email, I would say, think of all the emails you got in your LinkedIn, Facebook, mm -hmm. back into Real Geeks. Whatever Ooh. systems you have, Vulcan, get them all. <laughs> then, <laughs> all in one. And then um, if you go to Google and you type in Ooh. the magical seller lead generation email, oh my goodness. Um, I write that every six months now. There's one in the summer. But um, it's basically like kind of like a – it starts off educationally, but basically just says click this link to go request your value report. And that thing hits that list oh and drives everyone back to the Real Geek site, and everyone starts opting in your ISAs and go, like, whoa. I was yeah, expecting well, they this. opt in, and they also, if they're not registered already on the website, if they're registered on the website, it'll just show, send a, they'll, it won't even ask them to sign up, and it, mm -hmm. but it will notify you as a trigger. But yeah. if they're not signed in and they don't opt in, we still capture their address, and now you got somebody to go frickin', you know, use the yeah. cold directory or whatever directory you're doing to go after them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that's, you know, that's a, a one way of calling, or of working your database. You got it, but here's the deal: you can't just spam them with crap. A lot, a, a lot of people want to spam them no. with crap. No, because it's... Frank uh, doesn't do crap, Jeff. No, no. no I, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying there's a lot of stuff out there that people are sending them, and they're just going, oh, my God, why are they sending me this stuff, right? 
So, uh -huh. so you got to do it with tact. You can't just start pounding them. Um, anyway, so that, I would definitely leverage your database. Anyway, I think That's... I got kind of off track, but anyway, forget. <laughs> so yeah, well, I just want to bring up what you were doing for your list, Mike. There, I, what, you're gonna have to repeat the question. Jeff went on a tangent there, and I'm yeah. Well, the question was just, what, what you were doing with your database, and, what you ideas. Ideas, and we gave a bunch of ideas to the audience on what they could do. And I think we got that, but I didn't want to overlook the fact that I was hearing what was going on. But I'm like, well, there's a lot of database stuff going on here that we didn't catch. And you mentioned mm -hmm. what 60% of your business is still database. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, so I'm still touching touching my clients, my my old friends, my my current friends, my new friends. Uh, I'm making uh, so I'm making at least 30 phone calls a day. Uh, so when we go through our our new expireds, our old expireds, the FISBOs, the old FISBOs, uh, circle prospecting. Then at the end of the day, I'm calling my friends, my family, everybody, just to touch base with them, see how they're doing, how's the house. Uh, seen or heard from you guys in three months. What's it going? I miss you. Uh, or I've, I've driven past your house. I think we need to meet up for lunch or dinner here. It's your kids are growing up so quick. Um, so that's, that's how I touch base with them. Uh, and then all of a sudden, they're introducing me to their grandmother or their aunt that's got a $300,000 house to sell. And then they know their neighbor that's interviewing other agents that they walk over the street and introduce me to them. Uh, and all I need is an introduction and... A, a tr quick handoff, and we're we're in the door. I got so. a quick question there, Mike. Um, so you, I, I think it's awesome and phenomenal that you're calling your center of influence and past clients, everyone you know, and you and you're and that's in your plan. How often are you calling them? Once, tw uh, twice, three, four, five times a year? Kind of. Um, uh, the average that you're seeing, I wish I had it drawn down that I'm calling my center of influence. I'm supposed to call them. Or touch base to him 33 times, um, but you're hearing, you're probably seeing out of a hundred of my close friends, I'm touching base with them at least three to four times a year. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All so right, Mike, uh, I want to. You have such a great story, man, of how you got started. And again, I just want to go back the aha mm -hmm. of someone telling, just starting off real estate, of building their team to go interview 50 people for that key role saved you, and then how you focused on listings, and you didn't focus on buyers, and you focused uh, on prospecting before dropping all the money on the marketing. You have lucked yeah. out and have avoided a lot of mistakes along the way. I'll tell you that to where you're at today, so kudos no. to you. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Uh, I wish I could take all the credit, but a lot of the credit goes to my team leader. Uh, he took me underneath his wing and taught me how to run a business, and not, not just be a realtor that sits there and wants to play golf every Friday. And be bellied up to the bar. Uh, so what? So what mistakes? You still made some mistakes along the way, during this journey. Could you maybe point out three things that you did Hello. that you wish you would not have hey, done? Hey Frank. Yeah, I'm here. You cut there. there. I'm here. You asked, you asked a question. I. I I'm sorry. So here's so here's my here's my question. We got a bad re. Uh, All right. So my question is: There's probably maybe three mistakes that you've made that you wish you can go back and not do mm -hmm. on your journey. Even though I'm saying you did virtually everything right, from what I'm hearing, can you think of some things that you wish you would not have done? Wow, things I wish I would not have. done. It might done. be hard because you did a lot of things right, so it might be a difficult question to answer. He he was a little slow at the beginning, though. It took him a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah, <to> yeah. it's <laughs> it's. I'm still I'm still in the beginning part of, of <clears throat> business. I would <clears throat> say it's. I know there's real there's realtors out there that. You know, or 27 years old, just running a multi-million-dollar business. Um, but I'd say the <coughs> biggest mistake that I had or regret uh, is the fact that I jumped in. I tend to jump into things too quickly. Um, so I wish I would have built a database sooner. Um, I wish I would have done that. Uh, that would probably be my biggest mistake: was sitting there those six months starting real estate and not learning how to prospect or lead generate uh, or start growing the database. Just going through Facebook and sitting there asking people for their addresses. Uh, I wish I would have been a, a little bit more aggressive on that side of things. Okay, that's but, good. That's a great insight. What else? Can you think of another thing? Oh, wow. I, I wish I just would have read the Millionaire Real Estate uh, <clears throat> book 
uh, three years ago. Nice. Um, Great book. Not, not even hearing about that book until a year and a half ago breaks my heart. Because <laughs> uh, that is a perfect business plan on how to run a business. Awesome. Hey, Mike, I got a question. <clears throat> We're going through, yeah, we've got, you, got you to this point, and you're building and you're, you're, you're bringing on more talent. What, what, what is your goals and, and what do you see next year? Uh, I mean, yeah, what's so that we, look like? We <clears throat> actually just uh, sat down last week and set uh, our 2016 goals uh, and what everyone wants to do. And so for next year, we're going to be doing 165 transactions. We're going to double again. Uh, and we're looking to do over 40 million in real estate. That's great. Um, so that's our goals next year. Um, nice. Mm-hmm. And, and so and we're gonna go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, we kind of got a delay. Uh, so you're gonna do over 40 million. You're gonna over double your business. What sh what things are you gonna implement, and what things do you got to make sure you get done to accomplish that? Um, so. Things to get done would be adding more people to the team, the right people, the people that are hungry and that believe in our team concept. Uh, that's the thing that needs to get done. Otherwise, I would say I'm a Tasmanian devil of, of implementing systems. Uh, that, that's why uh, she's the best at it. She's the one that keeps me calm uh, because otherwise I'm just sitting here, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Why haven't we done that yet? Uh, and she's the one that builds the systems for our business. Um, so as far as what needs to get done, it's just interviewing the right people to add them to the business uh, and to get them bought in and trained up for next year. I want everyone to know we have the Q&A app open. Jeff, let's get some of the questions on the right. Yeah, Sound get good? the Q&A. Right. Let's, let's do that. We're so winding down. I think we asked this before, the hour. but uh, <clears throat> what is circle prospecting? That's another way of saying just listed, just sold calls. <clears throat> and we answered that earlier, Steve, in the... <clears throat> And the hangout is just another kind of slang term for just listen to sold calls. When a house sells, you basically call all the neighbors, mm -hmm. and they're asking what service you use, and it's uh, coal information. Mm -hmm. So it's coalinformation.com, Joe, and they'll sell you uh, the names and phone numbers of all the people in the neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. Some people are saying that the numbers are poor, and they're having difficulty getting legitimate numbers. Now, you're in Kansas City. I do know in certain markets it is a little more difficult from what I hear. Yeah. How are the numbers that you're getting to make those calls directly from Cole? The numbers are fantastic. If you uh, pay an additional fee, uh, you can also get cell phones now. So the numbers have gotten even better just in the past year. Uh, people are still wondering, how the heck are you getting my phone number? Uh, so when people keep asking that, I think the numbers are great. Anything? Any other tips you can give on getting better numbers? So Annie was asking, like, 50% of the numbers she gets through Cole are invalid. She, she must doing? be looking up. She must be looking up for specific addresses for Cole. Yeah. He's using Cole not for specifically for that. He's using Cole for just like here's this list. Here's this address. Give me a circle around there, and they're just calling. They don't care. If, yeah. I, that's how you're using Cole, right, Mike? Correct. Correct. Uh, we sit there in line the neighborhood, call the whole neighborhood. So there's some people that uh, we don't. We're not able to touch on. Um, okay. And that gives yeah. you cell numbers as well as the landlines, right? Correct. Cool. Great. Mm -hmm. So the book was The Millionaire Real Estate Agent Book mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. Gary Keller. Correct. So The Millionaire Real Estate Agent Book, you get that on Amazon. I think it's like 12 bucks. Again, one of the best business books I have read, too. Uh, open to open my changer. mind to it. Yep. So let's see here. So let's talk about your hires. Could you maybe be comfortable giving us a range of compensation structure for the key yeah. people on your team? Yeah, I'm an open book. Uh, what would you guys like to know? Um, I want to know. I want to know. I like to know what your your original assistant was and how they're comped. Mm -hmm. Outbound ISA, how they're comped. I think we talked about your buyer's age. That's just a 50-50 mm -hmm. split. Yep. Um, so it's uh, our our assistant receives uh, 15 hours uh, or 15 bucks an hour, uh, and she works from uh, nine to five Monday through Friday, um, which she gets paid bonuses uh, uh, when we are hitting a higher number than we were used to. Uh, just any time we get stressed out and feels uh, she needs to get bonus, that's when we bonus her out. Uh, our inside sales agent is receiving uh, t 12 bucks an hour, and then he receives 10% uh, on uh, uh, listings that he brought to the team. Uh, so on our listing appointment he sets, uh, we get the listing, and then he receives 10%. Um, I feel that's pretty standard across uh, all the YouTube videos I've been seeing, um, maybe a little bit more. I know some people can get a better deal. Uh, but with me, I'd rather see longevity 
I can keep that uh, inside so for now. Uh, you're breaking up, Mike. You're breaking up. Hang on. I'm, what we're gonna it? do is we're, we're Mike. We're gonna get back to that. I'm gonna let your catch your connection catch up. You bet. Right. So just hang on. Uh, we have another question. Come back, Mike. Yeah, just let your connection catch up because it'll get better in a second. Um, <laughs> Rion Tatum asks, um, he sent an email to his database about what is your property worth, and he didn't get a very good response rate. Frank, how can I get a better response rate? Write a better that's email. <laughs> well, that's, it's copywriting. So first off, I'd make sure that you have all the emails from your LinkedIn contacts, which you can get. You have all the emails from your Facebook contacts, which is possible hmm. to export through Yahoo. I'd make sure you have all the emails from your cell phone. I'd make sure you have all the emails of your contacts, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to send them like, just a very nice, helpful reconnect message of some type and give them the option to you know, re- opt out if they want to hear from you because you're kind of in a gray area with spamming there. But there's at least some existing relationship with those people, if you follow me. But then the next message, if you want to kind of see how you write that, and we don't have time to go into how it's written, but you want to model something, a great email gets you great response, Google the magical seller lead generation email, something I write, and model that and send that out to your list. You should get a much better response. Mike, let's see our connections back. Let's go back to where you're at in salaries. Yep. Uh, so on the ISA, it was 12 bucks an hour, uh, 10% commission on uh, the listings that he brings to the team. Um, and then from there, the buyer's agent uh, receives a 50, uh, 50 split. Um, and then I hear this is where it kind of goes away from the model. Uh, any listing that she brings on that's a personal friend or somebody she knows, uh, she receives a 25% referral fee. Okay. Do we cover the compensation for your uh, prospector? Uh, yes, the inside sales agent. We covered that? It's okay. uh, 12 bucks an hour. Yeah. Okay. What are you doing for, you said you got business on Facebook. What are you doing for Facebook marketing? Uh, I hide within the comments. Um, so I'm, I'm either scrolling down, uh, <laughs> watching friends uh, sit there and talk about they're looking to buy a house or who knows of any houses on the market. Uh, we're doing Facebook uh, boosting posts uh, on our listings, uh, and then we're doing the Facebook ads. Uh, roughly spending anywhere from 20 bucks on a listing to 50 bucks on a listing uh, mm-hmm. or just boosting our business page. Got it. What time do you start mm-hmm. calling expireds in the morning, Chris asks? Uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, we start calling. Uh, at 8.30 in the morning, we're role-playing. Mm. Okay. How does Mojo compare to Vulcan 7? Do you guys have any experience with that? I do not. So you just use Vulcan? Okay, I think so they all work. Yeah, they all work. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Coal, it's not Coal Realty. It's Coal Information. Right, guys? I, or coal directory or something like that. Coal what directory. is it? Coal information. Coal directory. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the old crisscross directory. For some, for some reason, I like to. Yeah, for some reason, I like to call it coal realty. But every time I go there, it's another real estate site. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's coal it's information. Used to like the crisscross or directory or something like that, but coal information. Um, what do you use for Smart your guy? Data? What do you use for your database? You mentioned you're putting it all in Real Geeks now. Is that right, Jeff? Like, where's your centralized database, Mike? Our, cent- our centralized database is on eEdge. Uh, I've done Top Producer before over at Remax. I, I wasn't a big fan, uh, but we use Keller Williams eEdge system, uh, and then we're bringing it all over to uh, uh, Real Geeks now that you're able to import all your uh, information over an Excel sheet. So you're putting your entire database, buyers, sellers, everything on Real Geeks. Why not? Why would you not do that? <laughs> well, yeah. all they got to do, like I said, is call these people ask them for permission, click on login as user, save them a sold search, and now they're going to start getting sold data what they give them permission. Now they're a long-term play and giving them sold information. Who are they going to think about? Would Real Geeks, think about me would Real Geeks replace, uh, replace Top Producer, Jeff? Yeah, we're working on replacing all those. We're, we're bringing in additional features. That's our goal. Is so anyone that got Real Geeks, they can basically get rid of all their other CRMs. God, There's I'm a few things we've got to add, but ultimately that's our goal. Our goal is, um, and I'm not trying to plug, to be the best lead generation and cultivation and conversion engine out there at the best value. I mean, that's, that's, that's value, my mission. Value is fantastic. Yeah, Just yeah. so everyone knows, what's the monthly price point for your product, Jeff? It's okay to tell us. I want, okay. to that. I don't want to seem like a plug. You're not plugging. But tell people your about price eight point. To it's, ten time, it's about eight to ten times less expensive than the same other products that are in our league because they're not all in our league. 
Okay, I, I I consider us among the the top tier, and I'm not going to name those because I don't want to bash. But 169, we have a 169 a month model for one to two user, three to nine users, 199 dollars a month, 199 dollars a month, and 10 plus is 239, and our home valuation tool is extra 50 bucks a month. Okay, one last question. This is from mm. Florence. This got voted up mm. here. How in the world are you setting expired appointments? And FISBO appointments on the first call. What do you say to that, Mike? Last question. Uh, it's 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 pretty easy for people that we get on the phone. Uh, I'm tracking about you know, five to six appointments, um, and those are on to expired uh, because we're I'm going after the whole Kansas City market, um, and I'll sit there and talk with people. Uh, I sit there and try to build a relationship with them in the matter of five minutes. Um, and after I figure out the motivation on why they're trying to move, uh, why it didn't work uh, the first time around with their other realtor, uh, I simply ask, um, let's meet. Uh, are you available at 5 o'clock on Thursday or 6 o'clock on Friday? Uh, I would like to go over uh, what we can do to get your home sold. Uh, I'm not trying to get the listing on the call. I get the listing in the house. Uh, so I'm just simply asking for the appointment. Uh, on, on the phone call. Here's a big problem with most agents is as soon as they sense any sort of resistance <clears throat> or the person's pissed off because everybody's calling, they automatically like put their tail between their legs and don't continue on asking questions like Mike does, okay? <laughs> they freaking wimp out and like, oh my God, they're pissed off. Okay, well, I'm here if you did it and they hang up. So it's, the problem is most agents are weak. You've got but, to learn how to communicate with them. No, I'm serious. No, I used to call expireds every day. No, I, just, I, just, I, 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 I had a Glenn people. Gary, Glenn Ross moment there. Sorry. Call oh, these closers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, you know, all you got to do is listen to them, communicate with them, communicate the way they are, mirror match, tonality. If they're pissed off, get pissed off with them. Like, I know. Can you believe all these freaking realtors calling you? I'm sure. <laughs> and you're one of them, but you're like, you got your arm around them. I mean, come on, it's... It's Mike Ferry, Matthew Ferry, Productivity School 101. They get pit, if they're pissed off, be pissed off with them, not at them. And go, I know, can you believe all these freaking realtors? Next thing you know, they'll be flying over drones and um, dropping off packages, I'm sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guarantee they won't. That's great. It's true. So uh, I'm curious, Mike, you know, I mean, had you, hold, so, if you had you, so, if you had, sorry, had you sold the property, where were you going next? And just, like, get in with them, right, Mike? Yeah. Well, Jeff, not to, cut, not, not to cut you off, but we got to end the hangout. And which sure. is leading to the, the, the last voted up question was, people would love a copy of what you said at the end, that little script to, you know, would that be a problem for you selling your house? I believe what that's Oh, they want for. that one. I got a little. Could, if, you could, if you could write that to me, I'll put that in the comments down yeah. below here on the Hangout page, and it'll get I, I got I got that and some other juicy ones on there. Yeah, email on over, and I'll put it here in the I comments. Know. Here we got. But let's go I ahead and wrap it up, Jeff. Matthew Ferry. I, I, dude, I love those. It makes me want to just go start calling expires again because that stuff is great. <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, can you tell that I want to do it? And I haven't yes, done it in like do. 10 years. I want to call those freaking expires because I'll freaking kill them. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would love it. I could just, anyway, I'm, I'm dying for a reason. Maybe I should be an ISA for an hour. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, maybe we'll Correct do that one. Maybe. Like, uh, Anyway, I want to thank everyone for joining, especially Mike. He's been awesome. I think I, I just like I said, I I love the mega agents, but I love the agents that are freaking working to be mega agents even better because they're hunting, they're learning, they're growing, and they're just freaking excited. So I want to thank Mike for joining us. I want to thank Frank, as always, him and his team for putting these on because we wouldn't be able to put them on if we couldn't. And we'll see you on the next uh, Keeping It Real. And thank you guys so much. Thanks, everybody. Bro.